Born from a desperate need to survive, the Galil rifle is one of the toughest weapons ever made. This is the real story of how and why it was built. If you think a great rifle comes from a peaceful lab, you are wrong. The Galil came from war. It was born from Israel's fight to exist. After the hard fights of 1967, Israeli soldiers had a problem. Their guns kept failing in the desert sand and dust. They needed something that would work every single time, no matter what. The answer was not to invent something totally new, but to take a very good idea and make it unbreakable. They started with a Finnish rifle known for working in the cold. Then they made it work in the heat. They made it for their own brutal, real world. This is not just a history lesson. This is a lesson in real-world engineering. When you have no second chance, you build things differently. Every part of the Galil has a reason. Every piece tells a story of solving a real problem. So what makes this rifle so special? Why do soldiers trust it with their lives? Let's take it apart and see. First, the heart of the machine. The Galil uses a system called gas operation. When you fire a bullet, some of the hot gas is used to push a piston. That piston then makes the bolt move. It kicks out the old shell and loads a new round. This system is not new, but on the Galil it is built heavier. It is built tougher. The parts have more space around them. This means sand and dirt can fall out instead of jamming inside. It is a simple idea. If you cannot keep the dirt out, make sure the gun can work even with dirt inside. The gun mainly shoots the common 5.56 bullet used by NATO armies. This was a smart choice. It meant Israel could use bullets from its friends. But they also made a bigger version that shoots the powerful 7.62 bullet. This bigger gun, called the Galil Arm, could be used as a light machine gun. It gave soldiers more options. One weapon system could do many jobs. Think about that for a second. In the middle of a fight, you do not want to worry about your gun. You need to know it will fire. The Galil's designers knew this. They chose reliability over everything else. They chose simplicity over fancy tricks. This is the first big lesson from the Galil. The best tool is the one you do not have to think about. Now, let's look at the outside. The Galil is not a pretty gun. It is made of heavy steel and strong wood, or later, tough plastic. It feels solid in your hands. One of its famous features is the folding metal stock. You can fold it to the side. This made the gun much shorter. Why does this matter? For soldiers in trucks, tanks, or parachuting from planes, a shorter gun is easier to carry and use. It's a practical solution for a real need. On top of the barrel, you often see a bipod. This is two little legs that fold down. A soldier can lie down, pop out the bipod, and the gun becomes much more steady for accurate shots. Even the handle for carrying the gun is clever. It's hollow inside. The soldiers could store a small cleaning kit right there in the handle. Everything had a purpose. Nothing was for show. The sights are simple metal pieces you look through. They can be adjusted for wind and distance. But the real story is that they are strong. You could hit the sight on a rock and it would likely still be straight. Later, of course, scopes and red dot sights could be added, but the basic iron sights were made to never fail. Now here's a truly brilliant part. The Galil can be taken apart very fast with no tools. A soldier can push out two pins and the gun splits into main pieces for cleaning. In the desert, cleaning your gun is a daily job. Sand gets everywhere. If cleaning is hard, soldiers might not do it well. If cleaning is easy, they will. The Galil makes it easy. This simple fact saves lives. A clean gun is a working gun. Let's talk about the barrel. It is thick and strong. On the end is a flash hider. When you shoot at night, a big flash of fire can come from the barrel. That flash can blind you and tell the enemy where you are. The flash hider on the Galil breaks up that flame, making it much harder to see. It is a small detail with a big effect. It keeps the soldier hidden. Some versions even have a place to attach a bayonet. You might think bayonets are old-fashioned, but in close combat, they are not. They are a last resort tool. Having the option is better than not having it. The Galil was built for all parts of a fight, even the brutal personal part. 
but the secret weapon of the Galil is something called the adjustable gas system. Remember the gas piston that makes the gun work? On most guns, the amount of gas is fixed. On the Galil, a soldier can turn a small knob. This changes how much gas goes to the piston. Why would you do this? Because different types of bullet powder create different amounts of gas. If the gun is dirty, it needs more gas to force the piston back. If the gun is cold, the parts move slower. By turning this knob, a soldier can make the gun run perfectly no matter what ammunition they have or how dirty the gun is. It's a genius feature for reliability. It's like having a tuning knob for your life. This leads us to the most important word for the Galil, reliability. Soldiers in Israel told stories. They would bury the Galil in sand, dig it up, and it would fire. They would run it through mud. They would use it for thousands of rounds without cleaning it deeply, and it kept working. This reputation was not an accident. It was the entire goal. In a country where every soldier is a citizen, where wars are fought close to home, a failing rifle is not an option. The Galil had to be the most dependable tool in the army. Now, a gun can be reliable, but hard to use, not the Galil. The controls are placed for a soldier's hand. The safety switch is under your thumb. You can flip it on and off without moving your hand from the grip. The lever to release the empty magazine is right where your finger rests. The handle to pull back the bolt is on the left side. This means a right-handed shooter never has to leave their shooting position to load the gun. They can keep aiming while their left hand works the bolt. These are small things, but in a fight, with your heart pounding, these small things make all the difference. The gun becomes part of you, not a tool you're fighting against. The grip is textured. It has grooves for your fingers. Even if your hands are wet with sweat or rain, you can hold it firmly. The metal is coated with a special finish to fight off rust. In the humid air near the sea or in the sweaty hands of a soldier, rust is an enemy. The Galil fights that enemy too. For a nation like Israel that has to buy and make all its own equipment, cost and logistics are huge factors. The Galil was designed to last a long, long time. The parts are overbuilt. This means they are thicker and stronger than they strictly need to be. A part that is overbuilt will not wear out quickly. It might be a bit heavier, but it will not break. For an army, this is a trade-off they will take every time. A broken gun in battle is worse than no gun at all. A heavy gun that always works is a good gun. Because it was so reliable, other countries wanted the Galil. It was sold and used in many places around the world. Countries in South America, Africa, and Asia used it. Some even started making their own copies. When a tool is this good, people notice. The Galil became a global symbol of Israeli toughness and smart engineering. But the story doesn't end with the soldier. The Galil found other jobs. Police forces in some countries used it. Its accuracy and reliability were good for police snipers in dangerous situations. Weapons instructors loved it for training new soldiers. Because it is so simple and tough, a new recruit can learn on it without breaking it. They can learn the basics without the gun itself causing problems. A good teacher is patient and clear. The Galil, in a way, is a good teacher. Over time, new rifles came along, lighter rifles made from more plastic, rifles with more rails to attach gadgets. The world moved on, but in many places, the Galil stayed. Why? Because the new rifles, with all their fancy features, still had to prove they could be as reliable as the old Galil. In some units in Israel and elsewhere, you can still find the Galil on duty. It earned its place. The story of the Galil teaches us something important. True innovation is not always about making something new. Sometimes it is about making something right. It is about understanding the problem deeply. The problem for Israel was not just killing the enemy. The problem was building a weapon that would work for a citizen soldier in the worst conditions imaginable. The problem was building a weapon a nation could afford to make and maintain for decades. The Galil solved those problems. It shows us that good design is human-centered design. It thinks about the soldier cleaning the gun at the end of a long day. It thinks about the engineer who has to make a million of them. It thinks about the budget of a small nation. When all these things come together, you get a legend. So the next time you see a picture of this blocky, serious-looking rifle, remember what it stands for. It is not about looking cool. It is about survival. 
it is the product of a country that has always fought for its survival. Every line, every piece of steel, every design choice whispers the same message. Never again. Never again will a soldier be let down by his tool. That is the real power of the Galil. It is more than metal and wood. It is a promise kept. If you appreciate this deep look at real military history and engineering, please show your support. Hit the like button below. It really helps this channel, War Tech Zone, to grow and make more content like this. And subscribe for more straight talk breakdowns of the tools and tech that shape our world. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.